We have several number properties that we need to be familiar with in algebra, and some of them will be associative property, commutative property, inverse property, and identity property. Now these properties basically describes what operation or how the operations work in a certain expression or equation. So for example, we have the associative property. And in the associative property, if we have three numbers that we are going to add together, it doesn't matter which number you add first because the answer will still be the same whichever order you put in your operation. So for example, I need to add 2, 3, and 4. If I add 3 and 4 first and then add it to, t to 2, it will still be the same if I add 2 and 3 first and then add 4 afterwards. So this one is the associative property under addition. Now if it's true for addition, it's also true for multiplication. So if I have three numbers that I need to multiply, if I happen to multiply 3 and 4 and then multiply it to 2, the answer will still be the same if I multiply 2 and 3 and then 4 afterwards. So the associative property is true for multiplication and addition. Same way with the commutative property. Commutative property is similar to associative property, but this time we're just focusing on two numerical values. So if you have 2 plus 7, if you change its position and change it to 7 plus 2, your answer will still be the same because 2 plus 7 is 9 and 7 plus 2 is, is still equal to 9. So the answer or the value is not changing. Therefore, the commutative property is taking place. And for the second example, it's true for multiplication as well. If you have 2 times 7 and you interchange 2 and 7, it will still give you the same answer, which is 14, because of the commutative property. So commutative property is true for multiplication and addition. Now for the inverse property, it's basically telling you to add or subtract to a given number that will give you its inverse. Now, for addition, your inverse for addition is equal to 0. So you need to think of a number to add to 2 that will make it equal to 0. And that number is negative 2. So the inverse property under addition will simply 2 plus the opposite number that is given, which gives you the inverse, which is 0 for addition. And for inverse property under multiplication, it's going to be 1. So for example, I have 5 and then I need to multiply a number to 5 for it to be equal to 1. The number that I can multiply will be its reciprocal, which is 1 over 5. And that's how the inverse property works for addition and multiplication. It might be a little bit uh, abstract for most of you, but you will understand it better with our examples later on. So let's say I have 9. And I'm thinking of a number to add 9 for it, equal, for it to be equal to 0, which is the inverse property. And that number will be, will be equal to negative 9. And what I'm doing right there is the inverse property. Now, the identity property is basically telling you what to add or multiply to a certain number for it to be equal to the number itself. That's why it's called identity. So for addition... If let's say I have 2 and I need to find a number to add 2 for it to be equal to 2, that number will be equal to well, that number will be 0. So 2 plus 0 will be 2 under addition. And under multiplication, it's going to be a different number because if you want to multiply 5 for it to be equal to 5, or the number itself, that number will be 1, which is basically the inverse of your addition and multiplication. So that's how the associative, commutative, inverse, and identity property, property works in certain equation like this one. Now there are some several other properties that we can um, C in some operations or equations. So we have the distributive property, opposites, absolute value, and reciprocal. Now the distributive property is given by this example. Let's say you have 3 plus 4 inside the parentheses and you have 2 outside the parentheses. If you distribute 2 to 3 and to 4, which is basically multiplying 2 to 3 and 4, it will still be the same for 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. And that is the distributive property. So if you add 3 and 4, which is 7, multiply it by 2, will still be equal to 14. If you multiply 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 8. So they are the same because of the distributive property. Now the opposites is pretty basic. 
You just need to think of a number that is opposite to the given number. So if I have negative 5, its opposite number will be positive 5. And if I'm given 7, the opposite of 7 is negative 7. So for absolute value, absolute value is basically defined as the distance by a number from 0. That's why it's always going to be positive because we talk about distance of that particular number. So for example, if I have 7, the distance of 7 point from 0 will be 7 units. That's why it's still 7. And if I have negative 7, the distance of 0 or negative 7 from 0 will still be 7. That's why an absolute value will never be negative because it's always going to be positive for the distance is true. Now, for the reciprocal, if we have 2 over 3, the reciprocal of 2 over 3 is 3 over 2, which basically flipping the number of your numerator and your denominator. So 2 thirds is reciprocal for 3 over 2, and if I have 5, the reciprocal of 5 is 1 over 5. Now in this given example, let's identify the number property for each equation. So for number one, we have this equation and we know that the property being um, display in this equation will be the distributive proper property because if you multiply 3 to x and 3 to y, it will be 3x plus 3y. So number one is using the distributive property for the number or the equation of this notation. So for number two, we have associative property because if we add 3 and 7 first and then add it to 2 it will still be the same if we add 2 3 first and then add it to 7 so no matter where the placement is your answer will still be the same under addition and for number 3 if we have 7 times negative 10 which is the same as negative 10, 10 times 7 the property we're using for 3 will be commutative property and for number 4 we multiply 5 by 1 over 5, and when we did that, it gives us the number itself, which is 5. Therefore, this is the identity property under multiplication. And for number 5, if I have 6 plus negative 6 and it gives me 0, which is the identity or the inverse of addition, so this will be an inverse property under addition. And for our last number, we have 8 and we added 0 to 8, and it still give us 8, that means that the property we are using is the identity property under addition.